Hey YouTube, it's ACU, and today we have an incredibly important update to discuss in the world of Apple and jailbreaking. To date, the company released iOS 9.2 to the general public. <laughs> All right, and before we get into this incredibly important update, there are two things I wanted to mention. First of all, if you're interested in winning a brand new fourth generation Apple TV, then just be sure to rate this video up and stick around to the end. That will actually be concluding within the next week or so. Just be sure to get your entries in as soon as possible. Second, if you're not interested in watching this entire video for whatever reason that may be, there will be a TLDR or rather TLDW, too long didn't watch wrap up, more toward the end of this video. And there will be an annotation in just a second that will allow you to to skip directly to that segment. So first of all, let's get into the actual firmware itself, iOS 9.2 and what it actually features. So I have this iPhone 6 here. We're just going to bring it into view. I'm just inside of settings, general software update, and it does appear as an available update. Again, iOS 9.2. And for the general synopsis, it states the following. This update contains improvements and bug fixes, including Apple Music improvements for making playlists, saving songs offline, and browsing classical music. Also a new top stories section in news so you can stay up to date with the most important news of the day. And finally, mail drop in mail for sending large attachments, which was first introduced in OS 10. But when we actually tap on learn more, that's when things start to get interesting. So as you can see here, we do have this incredibly long change log. iOS 9.2 has fixed a number of bugs, not only related to general issues, but also security. So I'm not going to get into all of these and the first three are the three I just mentioned Of course, it gives you additional breakdowns on what has actually changed in Apple music in 9.2 But let's just resume right where they left off with mail drop So iBooks also supports 3d touch to peek and pop pages from the table of contents Which is pretty cool. Actually if you use iBooks to read often It also states that iBooks now supports listening to an audiobook while you browse your library read other books or explore the iBook store. And now iPhone support for USB camera adapter to import photos and videos, which was actually released today specifically for the iPad Pro. However, as you can see here, iOS 9.2 does actually include support for it as well. Now we have improved stability of Safari, improved stability of podcast, fixing an issue that caused mail attachments to become inaccessible for some users with pop email accounts, resolving an issue for some users that caused attachments to overlap text in mail. It also fixes an issue where live photos could have turned off after restoring from a previous iCloud backup. It addresses an issue that could cause search in contacts to display no results, resolves an issue that could have prevented calendar from displaying all seven days in week view, fixes an issue where the camera screen on iPad could be black when attempting to capture video. It addresses a very rare issue inside of the activities app pertaining to daylight savings time. It also fixes an issue that could have prevented data from appearing inside of health, fixes an issue that could have prevented wallet updates and lock screen alerts from displaying, and it just goes on from there. So the rest of these are just bug fixes. Again, like I said before, I'm not going to get into all of them, but they also have accessibility improvements, which is pretty important too, as well as Siri support for the Arabic language. That's also a big one, but those aren't the most important changes. Those actually come lower down here. As you can see, we do have a link that it states to visit for the security contents on iOS 9.2. And when we tap it, it just redirects us here. So we're actually going to get into the security improvements found inside of iOS 9.2 right now. All right, so I do have Safari open here on my iPhone 6s Plus, and we're just inside of that exact same tab. As you can see, it states Apple security updates and that this document outlines security updates for Apple products, specifically related to software releases. So scrolling down here, we not only have the latest version of Watch OS and OS 10 El Capitan, but also tvOS 9.1 and iOS 9.2, which is what we're most concerned about. So when we tap on it, we get this page here, and I'm not going to detail everything. What we're actually going to do is we're going to employ the use of iOS's built-in search functionality for Safari. So all we have to do is just go up to the URL bar here, and we can actually type something else in. So what we're interested in is Pangu. So we can type in Pangu, and then from there, we can scroll down a little bit, and we can go find on page. So now it will find all 
references to Pangu on this specific page. Because Apple does credit jailbreak teams for their discoveries and their exploitation of those discoveries inside of their jailbreak utilities. In this case, Pangu. So let's go ahead and scroll up a little bit so we can see what this bug is. So it states that this corrects an issue related to DYLD, which stands for Dynamic Linker, and it's actually part of the operating system that loads and links the shared libraries needed by an executable when it's executed at runtime by copying the contents of the library from persistent storage to the RAM. In short, this was one of the exploits Pangu was able to use in their jailbreak. So for the impact, it states that a malicious application may be able to execute arbitrary code with system privileges. And these issues were addressed through improved environment sanitization. And now let's go ahead and tap on the downward arrow to go to the next reference here. So this next bug that's been fixed is for mobile storage mounter. And for the impact, a malicious application may be able to execute arbitrary code with system privileges, which is exactly the same thing that was said before. It also even lists that the same devices it was available for, the iPhone 4s and later as well as the iPod touch 5th gen and iPad 2 or later and finally we have the last bug here so scrolling up again this is related to the photos application so do you guys remember when actually jailbreaking with Pangu for iOS 9.0.2 it asked you to open the Pangu app it placed on your device and granted access to your photos well as I stated in my jailbreak tutorial that was a point of injection they actually used it as part of of the jailbreak itself, they were able to exploit the default photos application. So for the impact, this time we have something a little different. It states an attacker may be able to use the backup system to access restricted areas of the file system. So this was also a very key exploit for Pangu in jailbreaking iOS 9. So let's go ahead and tap done here. And I wanted to mention that all three of these new bugs that have been closed inside of iOS 9.2 are completely separate from the two major vulnerabilities that were closed inside of iOS 9.1, which switching tabs here, I actually have the security contents of 9.1 open. I'm not going to go over them inside of this video. However, if you want additional information on them, then just be sure to check out my corresponding update for iOS 9.1. I will have it linked on your guys' screens now if you're on the desktop version of YouTube via annotations. But in short, iOS 9.1 did close the primary kernel exploit utilized by the group. So now we've reached the point in this jailbreak update video where we discuss whether you should update your device to iOS 9.2 or not. Well, really, there are two different cases. First of all, if you're already jailbroken on iOS 9.0.2 or earlier, the answer should be quite clear. No, you shouldn't update because once you do, you will lose your untethered jailbreak until a new utility is released and made available to the public. So if you're on 9.0.2 or earlier and you're not jailbroken, then just be sure to watch my past jailbreak tutorial for iOS 9.0.2. If you're already jailbroken, again, avoid iOS 9.2 at absolutely all costs. And the best way to do that is to just remain vigilant when connecting your device to your computer and launching up iTunes because iTunes will definitely prompt you to update inside of it. So don't just blindly click on the prompts iTunes throws at you because that is the biggest way individuals end up losing their jailbreak status. Next, if you're on iOS 9.1, meaning your device isn't jailbreakable anyway, should you update to iOS 9.2? Not yet. See, iOS 9.2 does close those three additional vulnerabilities even over iOS 9.1. Granted, they're not nearly as major as the kernel vulnerability that was closed inside of iOS 9.1. And while we do expect Taiji or Pangu to definitely release a jailbreak for 9.2 with backwards compatibility for iOS 9.1, meaning they'll most likely target iOS 9.2 instead, things could always change and we could be surprised with a possible jailbreak exclusively for iOS 9.1. Personally, I don't see that coming to pass, but I don't want you guys to be stuck on iOS 9.2 with a new jailbreak available for the former firmware, again, being iOS 9.1. And moving forward, if you are interested in jailbreaking, the absolute best thing to do is that once you've obtained City and once you're already jailbroken is to just stay on that firmware until a new jailbreak is released for a subsequent version of iOS. Once it is, then you can back up inside of iTunes, restore your device, jailbreak, and then restore from your backup, 
that's the absolute best advice that I can give you guys moving forward if you want to preserve your jailbreaks. Now, what about a new jailbreak? Will they actually target iOS 9.1 instead of 9.2, seeing as there are three additional vulnerabilities that are closed? Well, as I stated before, the chances of that happening are incredibly slim. If Taiji or Pangu had decided to jailbreak iOS 9.1 and not focus or worry on 9.2, then they would have done it a long time ago because iOS 9.1 is over a month old at this point, and we've known about iOS 9.2 beta for over a month as well. See, jailbreak developers love releasing new utilities for the latest firmwares and the latest devices. The only reason that didn't happen last time around when iOS 9.1 was in beta form and Pangu issued their jailbreak for iOS 9.0.2 instead of 9.1 was because iOS 9.1 beta closed the key kernel vulnerability that the group used in their jailbreak utility. What's more, whether you're questioning if Pangu and Taiji are working on a new jailbreak, just remember that they are in stealth mode, so to speak, just like Pangu was before they released their iOS 9 jailbreak and just like every other jailbreak group and team has been in the past before dropping their utilities. That's just how jailbreak developers operate. They don't like to generate hype. What's more, before Taiji released their jailbreak for iOS 8.3 and then for iOS 8.4, they confirmed their interest in jailbreaking iOS 9. To paraphrase, they basically stated, hey, we're not interested in releasing another jailbreak for iOS 8, we're gonna focus on iOS 9. And this was actually before they jailbroke 8.3 and 8.4, of course that was used Used as a smokescreen. However, their interest in jailbreaking iOS 9 still persists. And considering Pangu released the last jailbreak for iOS 9 and 9.0.2, that's freed Taiji up since pretty much June to test what they've been working on thus far on the latest iOS 9 releases, being 9.1 and now 9.2. Additionally, it's very likely that Pangu has more vulnerabilities for iOS 9 that they've been saving for another jailbreak, and that's why they were probably so comfortable with jailbreaking iOS. 9.0.2, even though 9.1 was on the horizon. So now for the TLDW wrap up, there's not a new jailbreak as of recording this video. I'll let you guys know immediately once a new utility is made available. Just be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name. You will be instantly updated. iOS 9.2 itself brings a couple of minor new features, but also a number of bug fixes, not only related to what the end user would actually see, but also from a security standpoint, three more vulnerabilities that Pangu utilized in their jailbreak jailbreak beyond what was patched inside of iOS 9.1 have now been addressed with the release of iOS 9.2. However, both Taiji and Pangu still have interest in releasing new iOS 9 jailbreaks. And both teams are expected to be working in stealth mode, meaning they won't announce any sort of ETAs or actually their progress. However, they are working on new jailbreak solutions. And for additional information, if you just click the skip annotation, I do recommend re-watching this video. Now, with that said, if you guys like this video and you found any of the information in it useful just be sure to give it a big thumbs up let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section remember i will let you guys know immediately once a new jailbreak is available and if you want to be updated even more often outside of just subscribing to my channel you can also like me on facebook and follow me on twitter now for those of you who want a chance to win a brand new fourth gen apple tv visit freeappsfast.com inside of mobile safari and sign up it doesn't take long at all then you can download sponsored apps for points just so long as you do earn points you can then continue on to the third tab and and you see that referral link there? Take what appears after the eagle symbol and post it in the comment section of my unboxing of the device, the new fourth generation Apple TV. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.